Hey America, you may think that the greatest race car drivers in this country are those concrete queens on Sunday. Fact of the matter is, those ain't nothing but a bunch of rich kids outside on the asphalt and the best of the men and women found inside the dirt. So you're going to run that David Pope? Yes, sir. It's a pretty big race, huh? We've never run it. We, we didn't start till September of last year when we bought our first car. That was actually the second car I bought. He didn't start racing until January. I bought a bomber out of Houston for 3,500 bucks and soon realized that was a waste of money. And then we bought that one. And that was a good car. It just, I blew the motor in on the second night I had it. Jason Gomez built the car that I actually ran all the end of last year. They ran good, it was just an older car, so when this opportunity came by, I found it. It's an awesome car. What happened what there? The Somebody spun me out at KSP last week because he's a dumbass driver. You always get into ultra wrecks on the track? Yeah, it seems to be since, uh, since I bought this new car, everybody likes to take me out. I'm not name dropping, but there was a number seven out at RPM last week that said he lost his brakes and he decided to try to go up underneath me and spun me out. Broke my rear end. Cheap fix or? The rear end was 1800 bucks because it wasn't fixable. We started way back in 2017. Cousin is Gary Wright and he's always been a, a legend around these parts and I've always spent my life working. And as we've gotten older, we're able to spend a little more time and my dad always wanted us to do this so he's getting up there in age and I figured this is a good time to do it. So we go on the cheapest one, cheapest class that we could think of, and it's not so cheap. How much do you think you got in this car alone? <clears throat> I don't know exactly in this car because I've bought for numerous cars. I upgraded this one every, I've upgraded the motor, the transmission, the carburetor, the shocks, the springs, the rear end, the battery. In, in that stuff, I'm about 10,000 in, but I'd say I'm at least 20 grand into this car. We never wanted to race those go-karts, I mean sprint cars, because people like Justin Fifield and David Sherry, Raven Cole, they're, they're so young, they still haven't figured out how to drive. So we try to stick with these older guys. So factory stock seem to be pretty competitive, a lot of crack top too. Yeah, they call it drama stock for a reason. I think it's all good nature for the most part. You got people like, Jason Gomez, he's probably the king of the top. But I like him, he's, good. he's helped us out a lot. Good as new. Greg's wrap's only a month old, it looks like a hit by a big two wheeler. What happened to your car? What has it? Most people would be like, don't film me changing my carburetor. We have no secrets. We don't know enough to have secrets. We don't cheat at all. Man, honestly, I don't think it's necessarily the driver as it is the money that they have behind the cars.
sure it's gonna work? Why are you laughing? <laughs> Why are y'all laughing? What? That's it? Done. Wait. So uh, what what's going on? Where's uh Jeff at? Jeff got dumped by Frank Lackey last night. And tortoise pedal, upper control arm, both both wheels on the passenger side, tore the rear end out. Oh lord. Brakes, calipers, rotors, upper trailing arm, ripped it all to hell. What? So they've been up trying to get it going all night. He went over to Artie, Artie's house. And Artie and him and Jake King and a bunch of other guys are trying to get together. I don't know if they're gonna make it. Frank Lackey would get his. Sure about that? Eventually. At one point, we went to get back in the golf cart. The lady come running over to us, telling us, "Don't get in the golf cart. There's a snake in it." And we thought she was joking. We're like, "What?" So we started looking. We couldn't find anything. Well, as we're riding back in the pits to uh, our trailer, uh, the snake decided to jump out. <coughs> what kind? Uh, about a five, six foot rat snake. Oh, and that, then it that. went straight to the trailer and it climbed up in Jeff's car. So, uh, anybody knows me, snakes don't work. I don't do snakes. <laughs> so other people came over and were trying to get the snake, grabbing the snake, and they finally got out of his car. And me and Jeff pretty much decided that car was trash and we were going to leave it at that point that snake crawled in it. A heat race or uh, two limited modified heats. There's four modified heats. There's four junior economy modified heats, and then there's so you got five the best bucks. shot. Y'all are last, so he's, he's fifth heat, last position. So at least hopefully he'll be able to make it. The greatest fulfilled in 1975, and he was driving the stock car. Took the most. What was that? Uh, car lag and hot lag. Oh, good. As always, they need to go faster. What do you think the track's gonna do? It's gonna dry out. It's not typical Greenville. I think it's gonna be rubbered up one lane around the bottom for the end of the night. It's weird, it kinda has lines of grip in it. Something yeah, like that. that's uh you're gonna see a lot of people bouncing, but the track's really rough out there. Talk about this David Pope Memorial race. Well the history goes back uh about seven years ago. David Pope he started racing in 1975 and uh he 
owned a David Folk Produce Company for 25 years. And then he, uh, he raced until about 1990. He ran at Super Bowl Speedway. He, he ran at North Texas Motor Speedway, Buffalo Park Speedway, and Thunderbird Speedway, just about everywhere. And uh, this has been an ongoing deal. All his friends got together and his wife. They wanted to just keep his name going if we could. And so this is the best way we talk to do it. We're just still trying to keep the name going. And, and you see the outrageous amount of cars that show up for this race. 28 USMTSs today, 46 Limiteds. We probably got about 45 or 50 factory stocks. So we got about five heats in every division. Swooping in to save the day late, what's going on? Or what happened? Uh, this little guy named uh, Frank Lackey has little man syndrome and decided he was gonna throw me into the wall and uh, tore up my belly arms, my upper, the upper, the lowers, the axle, the calipers, the rotors, pads, a bunch of stuff. What did he say? He said we were just racing hard and it was the half a lap on the first heat race. So I went a total of one corner before he put me in the wall. Did you say, what did you, what did you respond? Well, I we went over there and talked to him and I, and I I waited a little while because I wanted to cool down. He pretty much said that him and some other guy were just racing next to me, three wide, and that something had to give, and it was me. I told him, I said, is that how, if it was you, would you be okay with that? He goes, I said, all right, man, I'll remember that. I said, I promise you, I won't forget it. And he slams his drink down. This is my bitch. Come over here and me. So you better step back away from me. What did he look at it from here? custom fabrication company. We do a lot of work for custom home builders in the Dallas area. Custom staircases, custom railings, architectural, everything. We want to transition over to building custom homes, custom container homes, um, like the one that I'm building myself. Learning a lot when I go to the races and see the time and the work that they put into their cars, which I can certainly appreciate myself. I tell customers when they come to me with a, a, cra a crazy wild idea, I tell them it's, it's just metal. It can be fixed, it's just metal. Uh, so I think absolutely if something's bent or broken and somebody thinks this is trash, let's, let's start all the way over again. There's certainly something could be done to, to get it repaired and get it back on the track. Lone Star Accessories is located in Mesquite, Texas, specializing in factory takeoffs, wheels, tires, alignments, lift kits, chrome accessories, and more. Located just 10 minutes east of downtown Dallas on Highway 80, Lone Star Accessories offers 90-day same-as-cash financing. Lone Star Accessories carries everything from 13 to 32-inch wheels and tires. Lone Star Accessories is also number one in Texas for factory takeoffs and wheel replicas. For more information, visit our website at www.lsatexas.com or give us a call at 214-499-6639. For your next aftermarket needs, you can depend on Lone Star Accessories. First Class Auto Glass is a top-of-the-line windshield repair and replace glass company located in Wills Point, Texas. With First Class Auto Glass, location is not a factor. We come to you with our free mobile service. We are also fully insured in all of our work that is done. First Class Auto Glass can replace factory glass, all aftermarket glass, flat glass for heavy equipment, as well as big rigs, RVs, car dealerships, body shops, and insurance work. We are your one-stop shop for all auto glass replacement. If you need glass, go first class and give us a call at 903-355-3651 or visit our website at first-classautoglass.com. IRP Race Cars is one of the leading chassis innovators in the southern United States region. Specializing in modified and sport modified chassis manufacturing, IRP Race Cars is based out of Longview, Texas. Throughout the course of its existence in the surrounding areas, IRP Race Cars has racked up multiple track championships and marquee victories. For more information on IRP Race Cars, visit their Facebook page at facebook.com slash IRP Race Cars or give them a call at 903-452-9168. For the next car to handle like a dream, it's got to be an IRP. How's it 
car. Pretty good. What are you doing? Cheating? Yeah. Yes, trying some stuff different. But I thought you said the car was good. No, it is. Just the track's gonna dry off. We're gonna make it a little tighter. How is it in a uh, hot lap? It's pretty good. We, uh, we're just gonna tighten up a little bit. And uh, man, we got to do something crazy. We got a stacked heat. We're starting to back. We got Clyde, Troy, Skip, Bobby Ruffin. We always draw that. We draw the back. We always draw the big heats. Well, uh, it seems like you had an outside line kind of going in three and four, though. And yeah, the guys on the bottom. That's probably gonna go away a little bit. Um, the track got, there was a little bit of a little bit of cushion up there, but that'll be gone the time we get there, I'm sure. Green flag is out, and we are underway here at the Racing Action with your Touring Outlaw Modified Series. Mitchell Clement could have had the early lead in one and two side by side for a second between Charlie Smith and Tristan Dykins. Smith could have had the advantage in the three and four. Dykins could have followed in on the bottom side of the speedway. Everyone on the inside of the Super Bowl speedway so far in this heat race event. Dykins now going to try the outside line in one and two. Wesleyville going to look to the inside of Dykes. Dykes though with a good run down the back straight away. With some momentum building up here for the 14 machine to the outside of Charlie Smith and a one and a two this time by. Dykes not able to make up any ground. Yellow flag is going to fly on the speedway. Yellow's out. Green flag, we are back on our way. Dykes going to stay up on the top shelf. Mitchell Clement still leads in this heat race. As we are three wide for second, Phil Smith and Dykes. Dykes now on that outside line as they're side by side below him. Going to be able to take over the second spot as we're working to three and four. Billy Breyer, meanwhile, in the background, able to get around Wesleyville as the battle up front. Dykes now checks to the bottom. Billy Brierton working the outside of the speedway to move up into fourth around Wesleyville. Now look at the outside of Charlie Smith. The outside line being utilized here by Dykus and Brierton. Dykus now trying to challenge Mr. Clement. Clement running an IMCA modified against your outlaw modifieds here this evening at the David Polk Memorial, and he is looking strong. Tristan Dykes, your defending touring outlaw modified series champion, now looks for the inside of Mitchell Clement on the tournament two. Clement able to get the advantage down the back straight away. Dykes looking to charge. We have just two more laps to go. Dykes, can he get it done? Clement able to hold the bottom. Dykes running the bottom one and two and the top side at three and four these last few laps. Dykes enters in the middle. White flag going to be flying. One more lap to go here. Your opening heat race for the Touring Outlaw Modified Series. Dykes going to shoot to the outside line in a three and four. And then on the middle side, and Mitchell Clements actually going to pull him down the back straight away. In the three and four off the turn number four. There's your leader. There's your winner, the number 18 of Mitchell Clement. Green flag is out here in heat race action here at the Touring Outlaw Modified Series. In the one and two we go. As we got them around, yellow flag is going away. Green flag back in the way here. Cody Smith going to have the early lead. Kel Westover looking to the outside as we are three, four wide right there for a second. Westover with the advantage. Westover now making a charge at your leader of Kobe Smith. Kel Westover definitely strong looking here in heat racing action. We saw Tristan Dykes use the outside line, but it looks like Westover has got it going just a little bit better than your defending champion in the previous heat race. Kobe Smith still on the bottom side, and Westover is your new leader of the line. Kel Westover in that 15 machine has took the lead. Smith trying to battle back as we are side by side for the lead in the three and four. Westover still with the lead as we make another lap completed here at the David Polk Memorial. White flag gonna fly one more lap to go to your leader of Cal Westover. C 
see Nick Strider recover from that early spin, side by side for position, not able to get it, and off the turn number four, there's your leader, there's one of the 15 of Kel Westover. See Nick's trying to get that spot away, not able to do so. Green flag is out here, your final heat race with the Touring Outlaw Modified Series, and it's a stacked one. Bobby Ruffin, Clyde Dunn Jr., Skip O'Neill, Wendell Bone, and Troy Taylor. This is a name made race for sure here this evening at the David Polk Memorial. Your leader, Latin number one, is going to be that eight of Skip O'Neill. Ruffin trying to hold on to second underneath Jeff Needham. Side by side behind him between Troy Taylor and Clyde Dunn Jr. Ruffin with the advantage for the second spot. Third right now, it's a battle between Taylor and Needham. Needham in the middle of the speedway. Taylor on the bottom. Needham actually making up some ground against the outside of the 121 of Ruffin. Up the floor, though, not able to keep pace with the 121 and actually losing a spot off of turn number two to the 56 of Troy Taylor. Now Clyde Dunn Jr. to the inside of Needham. Needham starting to get freight trained running this middle group on the speedway as he's now falling to fifth. Yellow flag is out on the speedway. Yellow is out. Green flag, we're back underway. Taylor now going to check to the outside line from the middle of the speedway. Side by side for a second on the turn for two between Taylor and Ruffin. Light down to your check the outside group. We may have a three car battle for the second spot here momentarily. As Doug Jr.'s got some momentum building on the outside line as Taylor took over second from the 121 of Bobby Ruffin with Wendell Bowden on the inside of Clyde Doug Jr. on the turn for two. Everyone on the bottom of your top five except for that 88 Triple X and Little Freaky Clyde Doug Jr. And Doug Jr.'s made the pass to get up into third around the 121 of Ruffin. It's now Taylor looking the inside of Skip O'Neill. Side by side for the third spot. Clyde Dunn Jr. leading the outside of the 121 of Ruffin. Two laps to go this time by. Dunn Jr. going to drop to the inside now as he solidified the third spot. Taylor still looking at the inside of Skip O'Neill. White flag coming out this time by. And Clyde Dunn Jr. is throwing it up on the top shelf trying to build some momentum. White flag's going to fly. One more lap to go. Taylor up the speedway. Almost took the gun. Clyde Dunn Jr. Troy Taylor, Skip O'Neill, three-car battle for your lead down the back straight away. Final turn, final time situation here. Skip O'Neill going to hug the tractor tires, and he's going to be your winner. Second is a duel. I think Clyde Dunn Jr. got it. Third going to the 56 of Troy Taylor. Factory stock heat racing action is underway. 25 of Greg Hammond involved in this one. As we got one around in one and two, but he keeps it going. We're going to stay green on the speedway. Josh Leonard will move around the loop, lap number one. Just As Hammond going to loop it around up at turn number four and come to a stop. Yellow's going to wave. Greg Hammond around in turn number four. Going back up the row on the road. Green flag, we are back to racing. Josh Landers, your leader. Walter Hamilton trying that outside groove. He almost falls off the speedway. Now Hammond able to reel back in the 1W. As we're going to have a battle for this position on the speedway between Greg Hammond and Walter Hamilton. Hamilton able to keep the momentum up on the outside of the speedway and hold off Hammond momentarily here. Trying to get up into that second spot. Josh Landers continues to lead. As Hammond now getting challenged for a position on the speedway. Getting past Greg Hammond falling in this heat race at end. With a white flag flying, one more lap to go. As oh, Walter Hamilton goes around in one and two. Checkered flag is going to wave. Greg Hammond going to come home in four. He raised the action. Green here. Jeff Hammett now starting at the back of this one and in that 13 Patriot Racing Machine. As we get pushed up here at the front of the field, but we stay green. 
Craig Oates and TJ Evans going at it now up front. And Oates looking to bang his way into the lead. Now battle for third between McFarlane and that 49 machine as TJ Evans has fallen to second. Jeff Hammond is not able to make a position on the speedway right now after that damage being done last night at KSB. Scott, Scott McFarlane now making a move to get up behind TJ Evans up into the third spot for the 22S machine. Hammond still far back in this field. Looks like a little bit of contact was made. As McFarland to the inside of Evans. A little bit of contact being made there. We're seeing some hand gestures out the window by the 215. As Jeff Hammett pulls off the speedway. Chad Flight is going to wave. Craig Oates, your winner. As we have an issue on the speedway, Skylar McFarland's come to a stop. He's getting out of his vehicle. Looks like we may be having an issue here. So, um, what happened out there anyway? I guess uh, he got mad that we were uh, trying to race hard with him, trying not to spin him out. Uh, got him loose a couple of times, still let him go. I guess I should have just went in there and door slammed him and come on out. But what did he do after the race there? Uh, he going to shoot me the finger again, but then he don't want to be, be a man, pull that window net down, get the helmet off. Don't come over here thinking you're somebody and run over people. Try to run over people after the race and all that. Shoot the finger. Oh, man, we'll wreck cars, fight. I mean, like I said, just come down, man. Look for a 22S. We'll be at the factory 50. We'll be ready to fight, run over cars. It don't matter. We're ready. Well, after a fix. Something's wrong with the rear end. We don't have a clue. It ain't gonna be fixed tonight, so let's have fun. I think it was rubbing a little bit, so. It's rubbing because it's something. Yeah, you were smoking or something. Oh, yeah, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a tire because when it blew it, I, mean, I can smell it after the second lap. Well, it's rubbing. Inside the frame on the tire because the rear end is shifted over the driver's side, probably about. That's so it's like just two. not clearing, basically, the yeah. frame? It's not clearing the frame, and it's. And it, we had such a small spring on this side because of dry slick that it was just laying down on top of it. He may have to throw a one inch space around. To get clearance. IRP Race Cars is one of the leading chassis innovators in the southern United States region. Specializing in modified and sport modified chassis manufacturing, IRP Race Cars is based out of Longview, Texas. Throughout the course of its existence in the surrounding areas, IRP Race Cars has racked up multiple track championships and marquee victories. For more information on IRP Race Cars, visit their Facebook page at facebook.com slash IRP Race Cars or give them a call at 903-452-9168. For the next car to handle like a dream, it's got to be an IRP. We are a custom fabrication company. We do a lot of work for custom home builders in the Dallas area. Custom staircases, custom railings, architectural, everything. We want to transition over to building custom homes, custom container homes, um, like the one that I'm building myself. Learning a lot when I go to the races and see the time and the work that they put into their cars, which I can certainly appreciate myself. I tell customers when they come to me with a, a, cra a crazy wild idea, tell them it's, it's just metal. It can be fixed, it's just metal. Uh, so I think absolutely if something's bent or broken and somebody thinks this is trash, let's, let's start all the way over again. There's certainly something could be done to, to get it repaired and get it back on the track. Lone Star Accessories is located in Mesquite, Texas, specializing in factory takeoffs, wheels, tires, alignments, lift kits, chrome accessories, and more. Located just 10 minutes east of downtown Dallas on Highway 80, Lone Star Accessories offers 90-day same-as-cash financing. Lone Star Accessories carries everything from 13 to 32-inch wheels and tires. Lone Star Accessories is also number one in Texas for factory takeoffs and wheel replicas. For more information, visit our website at www.lsatexas.com or give us a call at 214-499-6639. For your next aftermarket needs, you can depend on Lone Star Accessories. 
First Class Auto Glass is a top-of-the-line windshield repair and replace glass company located in Wills Point, Texas. With First Class Auto Glass, location is not a factor as we come to you with our free mobile service. We are also fully insured in all of our work that is done. First Class Auto Glass can replace factory glass, all aftermarket glass, flat glass for heavy equipment, as well as big rigs, RVs, car dealerships, body shops, and insurance work. We are your one-stop shop for all auto glass replacement. If you need glass, go first class and give us a call at 903-355-3651 or visit our website at first-classautoglass.com. Okay, so the 12 modifieds are going out on the racetrack when after the last B, after the last modified B. Eight of them are guaranteed to do the dash. The top finisher gets $540. Everyone else who participates gets $54 for even going. There will be two extras, so there'll be 10 in the dash total. It's a fan vote out of the four of you guys who's going to be the two. Who's the four? Bode, Troy Taylor, Chris, and you. I got you beat, Bode. Do you have to keep up with little stuff like that and explain it to them all the time? All the time. Yes, all the time. And I have to dumb it down sometimes. Oh, wow. That's mean. Flashcards and whatnot. It's, it's oh, fun. wow. The last two. He is a race car driver. You got to do that. So all race car drivers are, are no, it slow? No, it's cool, but you know, most of their cars are slow. No, I'm not even putting that in there. You shouldn't put that in there. No. Why are all their cars slow? It's not yeah, slow. I said most of them. Everyone but his should be slow. That's what you should yes, do. I think so. Yes. Are you good? Yes, I'm good. Hammond 
walking over with hands up, making sure that his brother's okay. We're gonna have to go pit side to check in on this action. I saw Jeff. <laughs> then I went. And then you ran over. Then him. you saw the air. Right you monster there. trucked him. Yeah. Who did I? Yeah. Who did I hit? Me. Yeah. Him. He went over me. Dude, yeah. I know people just kept hitting me from behind. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what happened. I have no freaking clue. Well, you drove over like wah. <laughs> right here. The bar right here. Too. Oh, I went through it. Yeah. I didn't go through it, but it's in it. It's pressing on it. It's spewing, spewing out. Hey man, I gotta go take Jason's hand, man. That was a hell of a run to get back up. He's like, he's in Oh, yeah. really? Yeah. Seems like you got it done, that'd be nice. Man, I got wiped out by that stupid 215. He's an idiot. But then you came back. Oh, yeah, I came back. I'm in the show. Did the 215 car make the show? Oh, he's making it, and I'm coming towards him. That's all that needs to be said. What happened in the B main? He come down on me. You know, and I can't get no further down. If, I, if I'm against the tires, you can't go no further. They're mad, just like in the heat racers. Guys got mad at me. So you're in the show, they're in the show Yeah, too. they're in the show. You worried about that carrying over at all? Or? Man, I'm not. I mean, if it if it does, I'll handle it. I'm not afraid to wad my car up. I'll wad it up and build a new one next week. Well, we're gonna do that 215 he runs over to the We're gonna cut him over the chainsaw. Woo! <laughs> Show him the chainsaw. Lone Star Accessories is located in Mesquite, Texas, specializing in factory takeoffs, wheels, tires, alignments, lift kits, chrome accessories, and more. Located just 10 minutes east of downtown Dallas on Highway 80, Lone Star Accessories offers 90-day same-as-cash financing. Lone Star Accessories carries everything from 13 to 32-inch wheels and tires. Lone Star Accessories is also number one in Texas for factory takeoffs and wheel replicas. For more information, visit our website at www.lsatexas.com or give us a call at 214-499-6639. For your next aftermarket needs, you can depend on Lone Star Accessories. First Class Auto Glass is a top-of-the-line windshield repair and replace glass company located in Wills Point, Texas. With First Class Auto Glass, location is not a factor. We come to you with our free mobile service. We are also fully insured in all of our work that is done. First Class Auto Glass can replace factory glass, all aftermarket glass, flat glass for heavy equipment, as well as big rigs, RVs, car dealerships, body shops, and insurance work. We are your one-stop shop for all auto glass replacement. If you need glass, go first class and give us a call at 903-355-3651 or visit our website at first-classautoglass.com. IRP Race Cars is one of the leading chassis innovators in the southern United States region. Specializing in modified and sport modified chassis manufacturing, IRP Race Cars is based out of Longview, Texas. Throughout the course of its existence in the surrounding areas, IRP Race Cars has racked up multiple track championships and marquee victories. For more information on IRP Race Cars, visit their Facebook page at facebook.com slash IRP Race Cars or give them a call at 903-452-9168. For the next car to handle like a dream, it's got to be an IRP. We are a custom fabrication company. We do a lot of work for custom home builders in the Dallas area. Custom staircases, custom railings, architectural, everything. We want to transition over to building custom homes, custom container homes, um, like the one that I'm building myself. Learning a lot when I go to the races and see the time and the work that they put into their cars, which I can certainly appreciate myself. Tell customers when they come to me with a, a, cra a crazy wild idea, tell them it's, it's just metal. It can be fixed, it's just metal. Uh, so I think absolutely if something's bent or broken and somebody thinks this is trash, let's, let's start all the way over again. There's certainly something could be done to, to get it repaired and get it back on the track. Modified 
series. Max City Thomas, Clyde Hunt Jr. side by side. Hunt Jr. with the lead down the back straight away. Side by side for third. Kobe Smith trying to work the middle side of the speedway. Tristan Dykes right there. It's the three car battle we saw in the dash. Carrying over here in your main event. Field is getting close to being run down by Clyde Dunn Jr. who's setting a blistering pace up here. He's running away from the field. Good battle. Oh, it's all oh, Mitchell Clement gonna get tagged and go around in the infield. He's close to the track. We may be having a yellow here, but the yellow is not coming out. We stay green. Tough luck for Mitchell Clement. Clyde Dunn Jr. now getting into heavy lap traffic. Everyone on the bottom side of the speedway. The rubber is building up and it's hard to move out of that groove right now. Clyde Dunn Jr. Sort, sort of stuck here actually. And now Matt Teddy Thomas has been able to close in. He's brought along with him Tristan Dykus as well as the aid of Skip O'Neill who runs in fourth right now. So Clyde Dunn Jr. stuck right now behind this lap car. He's got to find a line. He looks to go a little high. Max Eddie now looks to the inside of Dunn Jr. You can't really get out of this rubbered up groove that's developed on the bottom. Oh, Tristan Dykus has broke. Your third place runner off the speedway. That means Skip O'Neill up into the third spot, but tough luck for your defending series champion. Clyde Dunn Jr. getting challenged, which again, Matt said he's just not able to find a line as he slips up out of that rubber and you see him lose all kinds of ground. Clyde Dunn Jr. now with two lap cars side by side in front of him, able to get underneath Ross Malone. Matt said he closes in once again, but the yellow is going to fly. We got cars around here in three and four. Flag, and this will be interesting with a side-by-side -side restart. Your leader able to get out front and pull away. Deep in the field, looking. Charlie's going to make a move. Oh, Chris Huck on the end of the side of Ruben, into the side of Taylor. Come on, he's around the count. C.A. Nixon involved, Ross Malone involved, Bo Day, Wendell Bowden. And we got a parking lot in turn two here in your Touring Outlaw Modified Series main event. Green flag is back on out up the mess that just occurred and Clyde Dunn Jr. leader Skip O'Neill not able to make the move up in a second look at Charlie Smith making a move up in the fourth you do not want to be pushed out of that bottom groove if you are it's almost smooth sailing for the line underneath you look at Bobby Ruffin trying to battle back around Wesleyville Bill able to hold on that bottom side of the speedway Ruffin able to keep pace though but Bill gets the spot in the three and four Dunn Jr. out front, smooth sailing for the 88 Triple X. It's been that way since the heat race. It's been that way since the dash. As look at Max, any time it's make a move to the inside of Skip O'Neill as he slipped out of the groove down the back straightaway with just five more laps to go. Skip O'Neill now getting challenged by Kobe Smith. What a great run here for the number eight machine, former late model champion. Bobby Ruffin able to get back around Wesleyville to move up into that spot on the speedway. White flag gonna fly, one more lap to go for the 88 Triple X little freaky Clyde Dunn Jr. who's led every single lap of this main event. He makes his way down the back straight away into three and four. And the driver out of Sunnyvale, Texas is gonna pick up another David Pope Memorial main event win. You're winning a little freaky Clyde Dunn Jr. So you're, you're leaking. Ain't no Prostate telling. issues getting old. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it happens. It happens a lot. Green flag, we're underway.
away here in your factory stock main event for the David Pope Memorial. Chris Davis and Justin Whitehead side by side on the back straight away. Rubbered up groove has developed big time on the bottom side of Speedway. Whitehead trying the outside, but it is not working out. Whitehead slowly getting passed by more vehicles on the bottom of the speedway as he's trying to close the line off with a little bit of a bump there from the 49. You don't, don't want to give it up this year. Whitehead able to get the position on the speedway. Oaks now on the bottom as Whitehead tries it outside line. It is not working out. Racing action starting to heat up up front. Chris Davis trying to challenge Scotty Brown, who's led every single lap in this David Pope Memorial main event. Looking deep in the field, TJ Evans is being run down by Skylar McFarland, who's looking to give him a little bit of a nudge there. The heat has carried over here in your final few laps. Here's the David Pope Memorial, McFarland right behind Evans. White flag is going to fly. McFarland, he has a chance to repay Evans right here if he wants it. Final turn, final time. He's far back and he's driving it in the corner. Contest very on one low count. There's no Evans is going to beat out McFarland the line. So what happened in the main event? One group track and you started the fact you can't go nowhere really. Hard to pass. Come here, all right. Get ready for the big show. So not as bad as you thought, huh? No. Well, mine's gone. Greg's uh, gone, but I think mine just blew a hose. That's why it went all over the engine and was smoking so bad. See, look at that. I think it broke this right here. That's exactly what it is. Look. 